Now these are two peptides that are absolutely sweeping the nation. What is up guys? Welcome back, Ed here. Thank you for tuning in. Today, sick video for you. We're diving into some weight loss peptide medications to get you shredded for summer. Before we get into it, as always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Share it with your friends. Let's get this info out to the world. With that, let's dive right into it. Today, we are talking semaglutide and terzepatide. Now, these are two peptides that are absolutely sweeping the nation. Um, semaglutide you've probably heard of before. You might have seen it as either Ozempic, Wegovi, Rebelsis. They sell it under many brand names. Um, terzepatide, very similar. Uh, it is also known as Manjaro. Uh, I think they sell it under the brand name Zepbound. So you've probably seen commercials for both of these. Anyway, let's dive into it because this is the weight loss secrets that everybody seems to be using nowadays. Everyone in Hollywood's doing it. Uh, I mean, your friend, your people at the gym, your aunt, your uncle, everybody's probably on it and you don't even realize it. So if you want to drop some pounds and get shredded for this summer, this might help you out. Let's dive into what exactly are they. Semaglutide and terzepatide. So, they were both originally designed to control blood sugar for type 2 diabetics. They were meant to lower your A1C and they were also kind of developed as a form of weight loss medication for diabetes patients. To understand what that kind of all is, you got to know what your A1C is. The A1C, pretty much, it's a measure of your average blood sugar levels over the past three months. Um, as your body develops insulin resistance, your blood sugar or your A1C will rise and you become pre-diabetic or even diabetic if it gets too high. We want to avoid that. So, we want to keep our insulin sensitivity high. We do not want to be insulin resistant. These two drugs just happen to work to keep our insulin sensitivity high. So that is why they are good for people with type 2 diabetes. They both stimulate the release of insulin from the pancreas to help lower your blood sugar. You don't want that blood sugar to get too high. You need insulin, okay? So this is going to help the pancreas to release insulin to control the blood sugar. They're also going to decrease the amount of sugar made by the liver by suppressing glucagon secretion. Uh, now they are both also going to slow digestion. They're going to help you feel fuller longer. They're going to decrease your appetite and that in turn is going to lead to weight loss. So that is just a side effect of both of these drugs. Uh, you just happen to not be as hungry and your digestion, the food's actually going to move through you a little bit slower. So you eat less in turn. You don't gain weight. You actually lose weight. Boom. Magic. Awesome. All right. Uh, is this all for free though? No, it is going to come with some side effects. You might get nausea you might get constipation and upset stomach typical of any medication you see nowadays I feel like every supplement out there they say oh, it might cause nausea upset stomach yada 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 the really the poison is in the dose don't go too high with the dosages we're gonna talk about that in a minute if you're gonna do them you gotta be ready because they are a once weekly injection so you can't just pop a magic pill I think they are developed in an oral form actually so you might actually be able to pop a magic pill, but for now, in this video, we are talking about the once weekly injection for each of them. So, let's break into semaglutide first. Uh, as I said, you might know it by Ozempic. Um, it is a GLP-1 agonist. So GLP-1, that is a hormone made by the small intestines that regulates insulin release from the pancreas, blocks glucagon secretion to prevent rising blood sugar, and regulates digestion rates and appetite. Okay, so GLP-1, it has a lot of actions there. So when you supplement a GLP-1 agonist like semaglutide, um, you're gonna get all of these effects to occur at a greater degree. So it's good for diabetics, it's gonna reduce your blood sugar, uh, and it's good for those who wanna lose weight because it's gonna lead to a decreased appetite and in turn a decreased food intake. So, it's going to make you less hungry, you're not going to eat as much, it's going to lower your blood sugar, help your body to partition nutrients in a better way. Pretty neat. Uh, so this GLP-1 is a very, very powerful hormone in the body. Um, with Ozempic, you're going to start as low as 0.125 milligrams per week to about 0.25 milligrams per week. 
Typically, that's the starting dose. From there, you'll hear people go up higher, but you might wanna go a month, two months at the lowest dose possible. If you're still losing weight, stay at that dose. Then after a few weeks, few months, you might have to up the dose, 0.25 to 0.5 to 0.75, and that's kinda how it works. Your body will kinda get used to it, and you're gonna need more and more as time goes on. Now, terzepatide, this one is not as common, not as many people know about this one. Everybody knows about the Ozempic, you hear it all the time, uh, it's got the catchy jingle on the TV, oh, 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 Ozempic, that one, yeah. Well, terzepatide, very similar, but actually a little bit more effective than semaglutide, and I'm going to tell you why. So we know that semaglutide is a GLP-1 agonist. Terzepatide has two mechanisms of action. It is a GLP-1 agonist and also a GIP agonist. So we just talked about what a GLP-1 agonist is. We'll just reiterate, um, it regulates insulin release from the pancreas, blocks glucagon secretion to prevent rising blood sugar, and regulates digestion rates and appetite. So. GIP is going to complement GLP-1 very, very well. GIP is going to add an additional weight loss effect. It's going to reduce the secretion of stomach acid to even more slow up digestion. So they're going to work hand in hand here. The GIP is going to reduce the rate at the stomach acid is coming out, and then the GLP-1 is going to slow the emptying of the stomach. Very interesting, very cool. These things work great in combination. Whoever developed your Zepatide, kudos to you because you figured it out. Now, the dosage is gonna be a little bit different for terzepatide versus semaglutide. Semaglutide, as you just saw, we're gonna start very low, 0.125 to 0.25 milligrams per week. Terzepatide, you're gonna start at about 2.5 milligrams per week, and there's studies that go as high as 15 milligrams per week. That's gonna get very expensive. That's gonna be more than you will ever need, so I wouldn't recommend that you ever go that high. Start off taking 2.5 milligrams per week, Try it for a month, try it for two months. If you're still losing weight, that low dose is working. After a few months, if you're kind of stabling out, you're not really dropping any more pounds, you might have to go up to four or five milligrams per week, seven and a half milligrams per week after the next few months, 10 mil, all right, eventually. So, you know, your body starts to build the tolerance as time goes on. But with terzepatide, I think you can get away with a low dose, say two and a half to four five milligrams for an extended period of time and lose a significant amount of weight. Uh, there was a study done that said people, now they took it for 72 weeks, all right, so this is a very extended study, but they lost 15 to 21% of their body weight, which is a lot, a lot of body weight. So picture me, I'm a little over 200 pounds right now, but say I weigh 200 pounds, 20% of my body weight would be 40 pounds, which is a lot, all right? And the more you weigh, the bigger that number is going to be. So if I weigh 300 pounds, then I'm going to be down 60 pounds. Now that's over, you know, a little bit over a year, but that's just adding in some terzepatide. Not to mention, if you're going to add in some exercise, some diet, you, you know, you're going to see results happen very quickly on this stuff. It is very, very powerful. Now, let's break it down. Which one is better for you? In a study between semaglutide and terzepatide, they found that semaglutide lower A1C levels by about one to two percent, while terzepatide lowered it by two to two and a half percent. So you're gonna get a bigger reduction in your A1C level with terzepatide, uh, but ultimately they are both gonna bring it down. Weight loss with semaglutide ranged from 13 to 22 pounds in this particular study. With terzepatide, they got anywhere from 15 to 28, 29 pounds. So more weight loss with terzepatide and also better lowering of the A1C. So terzepatide, I would say, is a stronger, more potent GLP-1 slash GIP agonist um, because, like I said, you get that two mechanism of action where with semaglutide, you're only getting one. Semaglutide is not a GIP agonist. Terzepatide, very powerful, but also Ozempic, very powerful. So a lot of people lose incredible amounts of weight on uh, semaglutide, and then once they kind of plateau, they hit a stop, they will actually switch to terzepatide and continue losing weight. So incredible. 
Now, if you wanna get the best bang for your buck out of these, whether you're taking semaglutide or terzepatide, doesn't matter, follow these rules, write them down, okay? First rule, you wanna increase fiber and water intake so that you avoid constipation symptoms, you'll avoid you know, that upset stomach, nausea feeling, you wanna have a lot of water going in, a lot of fiber, okay? Diet is gonna be important. You want your diet to be low in carbs, high in protein, okay? So you want a low calorie diet that is high in protein, almost like uh, I would say a keto or a carnivore diet. You wanna avoid carbs as much as possible, low carbohydrate intake. Protein, keep it high, keep the calories low. So uh, dairy's another thing, it can also kind of be inflammatory. So if you wanna relieve some stomach issues, you might wanna avoid dairy as well. But I'm a big fan of Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt, add that in, uh, psh, it's awesome. High in protein, low in calories, it'll fit right in with your diet. But yeah, something like a carnivore diet will work great with either of these. You are going to want to also add in some fasted cardio. Your body is gonna burn fat most efficiently in a fasted state, meaning, when do you wanna do your cardio? First thing in the morning when you wake up on an empty stomach, go out for a walk, uh, hop on the treadmill, do some boxing, hit the bag, get in, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of fasted cardio in on an empty stomach. It is gonna increase the weight loss tremendously. And the final piece of advice, when you're taking these, try intermittent fasting. That means you should only take in calories, food, nutrients during, say, an eight hour window, a six hour window, if you wanna be a little more extreme with it. I think eight hours is plenty. And then for the rest of the day, you are not taking in any food, no meals, no snacks. You can drink water, that's fine. But do not take in any calories for the remaining, say, 16 hours of the day. So. Intermittent fasting would look something like I have my first meal at 10 a.m. I have lunch and then dinner by 6 p.m. Boom. That's all I can eat in that window from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's my eight hour window. Outside of that window, I'm not eating. Intermittent fasting. It is also going to do wonders when paired with uh, fasted cardio, a uh, good low calorie, high protein diet, and either semaglutide or terzepatide. So, um, as always, you know, these drugs come with so many warnings. Uh, they are a medication, so you gotta be careful if you're gonna take them. Always talk to your doctor. And be sure that if you have a thyroid issue, an underlying and existing thyroid issue, Get it checked out before you start these medications just because they can goof with your thyroid a little bit. If you have a healthy thyroid, you shouldn't have anything to worry about, but still, check with your doctor first. So, I hope you guys learned some information from this. Uh, I'll link some of those studies below that I mentioned in case you wanna check them out, but these medications are very cool, very neat, and the more I research them, the more I like them. So, I don't know, tell me what you guys think. Do you have any experience with either of these? Have you tried them out? Did one work better for you? Uh, let me know in the comments. And yeah, if you got any questions, concerns, drop them below. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching, Ed out.